tomorrow. Ohio State Michigan will battle it out in the big house today. We share our final thoughts about Ohio State's battle with the Michigan Wolverines. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to the episode of Locked On Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Friday. November 24th in the year 2023, and today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Joining us today, the final show before the game, it's Corey Thompson of the Scald and Great Empire on the YouTube. Corey, I'm glad you're back. The day before, the biggest game of the year. I'm glad to be back. It is always, always, always a blast on your show, brother. I appreciate that, man. We've done shows for a while on different platforms. And I always love having you on because you always bring a unique perspective. And your Uh analysis is always spot on. So maybe setting you up for at a lofty bar here. I hope you can. Uh, I better get out of here while I can. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, guys. Corey's gone. This is a solo show once again. No, Corey, this this game, man. I know we're on Mm -hmm. the heels of Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had fun celebrating with their family and their friends. This has been recorded prior to the Thanksgiving holiday. So I'm not going to get into the things that I did on Thanksgiving because those things literally have not happened yet. But, Corey, the thing that's going to happen tomorrow is the game between Ohio Mm -hmm. State and Michigan. Ohio State's unfortunately lost the last two years. This year could be different. I wasn't going to go with the sign-stealing stuff, but, Corey, (laughs) if you're going to go there, (laughs) we all know what happened over the past couple years. Mm -hmm. But, man, tomorrow's game, I'm so excited. Before the season, I was nervous. Not going to lie to you. Middle of the season. Not as nervous, but I was nervous. I'm not really nervous right now. I am confident in Ohio State and confident in Ryan Day that they will do amazing things tomorrow in the big house. I agree with you. Um, I I, know I I really refrain from judging what the team's going to do against the team up north, like week three. Yeah, like it's we and people on Twitter do this all every year, and it's so annoying. Like if we don't look great against I don't know whatever team we're playing week three or four. Oh man, Michigan's gonna boat race this team. It's like it's it's two months away, guys. <laughs> right? You know, teams. You know this, Jay. You've been watching sports your whole life. You are ex- extremely involved, especially in youth sports, like high school sports. You, people develop; they get better. You know, and they, over a season, they they learn they learn a few things. Like, oh, I could do this better. I could practice harder. I got this new technique. This is where I'm weak. I can get stronger. And a million different ways to improve. Ohio State. This team has shown improvement throughout the year. Now week seven, I'd say I don't I don't know you know what this team can do against Michigan. Now I'm like, well, we're running the ball effectively. Trevian Henderson is at another level. Uh, I people say he's back to his freshman year. I say no, he's better. No, he's no, he's better. He's a better yeah, running back. Absolutely. Kyle McCord, while he's still up and down and inconsistent at times, he's still always pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, I know I know people on Twitter complain about him if he incompletes a pass, but overall he's fairly solid. Um, Marvin is Marvin. The defense has exceeded expectations this year. Uh, we have a solid kicker. I don't know that it could be very key in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just saying, and Michigan has looked human the last three games since Connor Stallion's been off the staff. So you're right. You're right. Just gonna go ahead and say it. I feel pretty good about it. It's gonna be a dog fight. I'm not claiming we're gonna go in there and dog walk them by 30 points like we did in 19, but it's gonna be a dog fight. But I feel good about it. You know, I was thinking about Kyle McCord. And thinking about other Ohio State quarterbacks, Justin Fields was the first quarterback to have two full seasons, even though COVID was an odd year, yeah. two full seasons with Ryan Day. And Justin Fields was a phenomenal quarterback. I loved watching him play mm-hmm. football. But when it comes down to the numbers, I'm trying to get these numbers correct. Kyle McCord has 2,899 passing yards right now. Justin Fields in 2019, the only true full season, 12 regular season games, the Big Ten Championship, and then the one game against Clemson, he threw for 3,273, 3,273 passing yards. 
And so statistically, people may view McCord as a guy that, oh, he's probably around 2,400, 2,500 passing yards on the season. No, he's right there about to be 2,900. And he has a realistic shot of having more passing yards than Justin Fields had Mm. in 14 games in 2019. And I think that just speaks volumes about how Kyle McCord struggled. Kyle McCord didn't have a run game. Kyle McCord lost his number two receiver. He started with an offensive line that was trying to figure things out. And Kyle McCord also was trying to figure out pocket awareness, progressions, and all those things. The numbers, you may think, oh, they're one way. No, Kyle McCord's really close to eclipsing the 3,000-yard passing Mm. mark. And then also, let's say the Buckeyes play 14 or make it to the national championship 15, he'll finish the season with over 3,500 passing yards, maybe 3,600, 3,700. That changes the narrative about Kyle McCord. If you if you look at the numbers and say, wow, he may not only have more passing yards than Justin Fields mm-hmm. in 2019, but he might have a few hundred yards shy of 4,000 in his first year as QB1 in Columbus, which speaks volumes about his growth and the kind of quarterback he is. Yeah, I mean, it's been overblown how, quote-unquote, his rough patches have been. Uh, I'd say the Wisconsin game is the only game I felt like for – an extended period of time he was just yeah. not playing well yeah and that's allowed you know and it i and look and i said this on the podcast with brandon moses I, I said look i went back and watched cj stroud highlights and no kyle is not cj that's no. just a fact um he's not even close really as far as his <laughs> accuracy <laughs> but, um that being said uh cj also had rough patches at times he did. where it's like where the offense just couldn't move and I'm not knocking CJ for that. It's just part of growth, you yeah. know. It's, it's you just got to sometimes you're you're just off. You got to figure things out. Kyle, I, he's always been solid, you know. He's, I mean, people will always oh, how did he miss that? He's a bum. Yeah, he missed that pass, but he just completed 22 other passes that were right? solid and had two touchdowns and 285. I mean, it's like I look at him going against Michigan. I was like, if he's probably not going to be a guy who puts up 480 yards, five touchdowns. It's just I'm going to go ahead and bet the under on that one. But he, I bet you anything, he's a guy who, okay, he got 25 completions. He's around 65%. He's got 280 yards. He's got two touchdowns. He's had a really solid game, and we're right there in it in the fourth quarter. Then what's the issue there? You know, I mean, what, what are we complaining about, really? Because he's not CJ Stroud, Justin Fields, or Dwayne Haskins. Those are three first round draft picks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those are, those are guys who, uh, I'm God rest Dwayne's soul, but should all be in the NFL right now. Yeah. I mean, Kyle. Well, think is, about uh, um, with with, oh, with ahead, Haskins. With Haskins, unfortunately, he's no longer here. Mm-hmm. But if what if if he was still playing football and living, he'd probably start with the Steelers. Yeah, he'd be starting, and he and he was on the way to turning around the narrative about his career. Mm-hmm. So even though he came in, and I, I think he came out of school too early. I think he yeah, should have stayed in school one more year. You say Jay, that means no Justin Fields. I understand what that means, but for Dwayne Haskins' development as a football player, as a quarterback. I think he needed one more season. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, if he was still alive and playing football, he would definitely be a starting quarterback in the National Football League. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and it's, so we're comparing Kyle to, like, three superstars. Maybe Kyle's not generational. I get it. But he is a solid quarterback. And and I know Ohio State's we're not we're so-called not used to that. I was like, you guys are so spoiled at this point. <laughs> it's, it's almost insane. And when they compare him to Steve Bellis, sorry, I just want to – screen like you, you, you did i again i've been jay you've been with me on this where we're both getting up there in years we've been watching ohio state since whenever in the early 90s or whenever we've seen some terrible quarterback play yeah kyle mccord doesn't even fit that bill he's just no. not cj and yeah. again that doesn't mean you're bad that just means you're not otherworldly aaron Rodgers, pat mahomes ask you know i said at the b moses i was like dude watching cj throw the ball it's like watching young Aaron Rodgers or Pat Mahomes. I mean, that, that that's how accurate that guy is. You know, Corey, there's a guy that's behind uh, McCord on the field, and, and his name is Travis Henderson, and I believe he's going to be needed in a big way mm-hmm. for Ohio State to win this game. I'll dive into more about what I mean about Henderson. We touched on him earlier in the week, but we got some more numbers and predictions from Corey and I about what Henderson might need to do in this game for Ohio State to win. That's coming your way next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by 
eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because of eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebay.com slash motors. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Corey, earlier in the week when we talked uh, touched on um, Travian Henderson here on the show, it was a lot about just impact and mm-hmm. kind of describing his growth this season alone, him healthy, his growth as a running back, doing the things that he really struggled with over the past couple of years. And all of a sudden, wow, he's putting it all together. This is a game where he is playing this game healthy for the first time in his career. Because I, if I remember mm-hmm. right, 2020. One, wasn't healthy. Last year, didn't even play. All of a sudden, now he's healthy, playing his best ball of his Buckeye career, and the Buckeyes are going to need him to have a big day if Ohio State's going to win. Yeah, he's not doing this against Tulsa anymore. He's doing this against uh, the the big meat of the Big Ten schedule, um, and we needed it because our run game was dormant. It was oh, just man, not Oh, man, it was there. so bad. So bad. I, I I actually wondered how an offensive mind like Ryan Day could put together such a terrible run game. I did, I tried to go through theories after theories. Like, was Kevin Wilson being gone the reason? I mean, what, what, I, I said the same thing. I said the exact I, same thing. Guy is a genius creating run games. So, um, look, they've had to find their way. Justin Fry had to figure out what worked best with the offensive line. They've adjusted their scheme a little bit. Uh, and credit, by the way, to John Simmons, who has been everybody's punching bag all year who's immensely improved over this season um i think a pff to that just came out where two one of the guys without allowing a pressure in the last 200 pass attempts or something like that but um that being said i know i'm getting off rail here but uh, that being said trevian since the wisconsin game has been just a revelation yeah it's i mean People when Dallin Hayden had a good game against Purdue, and no, I'm not knocking down. I like Dallin Hayden a lot. I'm saying he's the best back on the on the team, even better than Trevian. I'm like, dude, Trevian is special. Trevian is a guy that a team can build around. He's that good. As long as he can stay healthy, I, I say he's been a little injury prone, but if he stays healthy, he's such an impact player, not just in the run game, but in the pass game. He's a dangerous check down option. He could take it 60 yards just because he's that elusive and that yeah. quick and fast. Um, and he's always been that, even since the gift, first game with Minnesota when CJ would threw a little flat pattern to him and he took it 70 yards of distance. Um, he's just a dangerous player. I mean, Michigan, their defense is very good. I'm not going to take anything away from him, but they have not seen a talent like Trevion this year. No, not the, just the talent of Trevion. It's the weapons that McCord has at his disposal. Even you haven't seen it. I don't think they've seen a quarterback like McCord all year either. And so this, there's so many things Michigan's defense will see for the first time all year, you legit have two first-round wide receivers outside, Abuka mm-hmm. and Harrison Jr. You have a receiver in Julian Fleming who is not a guy who is going to be the first option most of the time. Maybe there might be, be some times where he's like, hey, I know Harrison Jr. is out there. I know Abuka is out there, but they're going to be covered automatically. Hey, Fleming, I'm looking at you first on purpose because I'm anticipating the other guys being locked up. Yeah, he's on more of a security side. blanket, yeah. Security blanket, but, man, he is so good at blocking as a receiver. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things that people, and I even had this thought, hey, should they play a start of Cardinal Tate or a Brandon Ennis or Jaden Bout or somebody else other than Fleming? And I was like, wait, the leadership qualities that he has, he, he's needed out there. He's made big catches. Speaking of the one against Notre Dame, but also he is so pivotal in the run game. And I think Henderson, we might see Henderson just run Fleming's side a lot because, you know, Mm -hmm. if you get to the second level, you have a good chance of getting 10 to 15 yards because Fleming's going to do a phenomenal job of blocking his man. Yeah, and you need that physicality on the field, uh, especially in a game like this. I mean, and, and look, Fleming will drive me nuts at times because he'll drop. He's dropped too many passes this year, in my opinion, but... 
that being said, he he can he's not I get it, he's not the explosive guy we kind of expected out of high school and things like that. He's had like 18 ACL injuries or whatever. He's been injury he's been the injury bugs bitten him bad in his Ohio State career. But yeah, he, right now he's found his niche. He's Evan Spencer. Yeah. Is what he is. And if you remember Evan Spencer knocking two of Alabama linebackers to the ground so <laughs> Zeke could take it 85 yards through the heart oh, of the man. South. Um I I look at it, I agree with you. Uh, he can hold a block long enough to where Henderson can make a decision on the outside. And so you got to have the physicality against Michigan, especially uh, you got to show it because honestly, that's been the big bugaboo of Ohio state, right? They've lacked the physicality. They lack mm-hmm. the toughness, but they've been slowly turning that narrative around. And Julian Fleming is part of the reason why yes. I have not seen a receiver since the Evans, Sp- oh, well, Austin Mack, uh, probably uh, Ben Victor since those guys were here that could block like he's blocking yeah. because I, as much as I love Alave Wilson, uh, Nick, Nick, Nick Jimba and everybody, they all obviously pro players that are doing a great job in the NFL. They could never block to save their lives. <laughs> so um, seeing Fleming do that's kind of like, Whoa, that's taking me back to Austin Mack. What's going on here? You know, Corey, I had a number in my mind about how many rushing yards Henderson needs to have. I gave a range a 25 yard range. I'm not going to do that anymore. Let's go make it, give, give it a hard cap. I think Henderson needs to have 125 rushing yards in this game if Ohio State's going to win. And I think that's realistic now. You might be a Michigan fan and say, he's not doing that against our defense. You may be an Ohio State that fan that's saying, oh, whoa, whoa, Michigan's defense is only giving up 90 rushing yards per game. Are you sure? That's your statement? Absolutely. Because one it's going to eat, it's going to greatly help Kyle McCord out and take some pressure off of him, but also it's going to help the offensive line because they're going to be able to dictate a lot, a lot of what goes on in the trenches. 125 rushing yards, I think, is a realistic number to say if Henderson has this in this game, the Buckeyes will win. I understand you also have a number in mind, not so much rushing yards, but something Henderson can do statistically that if he hits this mark, Ohio State wins. Yeah, I'd like to see 180 all purpose. Um in the run game, I agree 125 is doable. And I think it if he's in that six yards per carry average like he's been all year, uh my goodness, he's had a good day. And I don't care if one of those runs is a 70 yard, you know, back breaking T D and then the rest of them are kind of just grinded out yards. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. Uh but I, you know, Kyle likes to check down, and especially if you do. And now I don't know what Michigan's doing for this for, to stop Marvin, but there's going to be a bracketing, obviously, and there's going to be uh, some too high shell because our, our offense some, some, some gets slowed down by that sometimes. Um, but Kyle's really good at just taking what the defense gives him. What's the defense going to give you at the time? No linebacker is sticking with Trevian Henderson. No, forget no. it. Dude, most so, DBs can't stick with them. I, exactly. So if he's if he's finding those soft zones in the middle and being a check down for Kyle McCord, he can make a five-yard uh, pass end up being 50 yards yes. right on uh, the, the snap of a finger because he just turns it upfield and he's gone. Um, so I could see 180 total all-purpose yards, two touchdowns for Trevian, and what a way to cap off. I mean, let's be real. He's not coming back next year. What a way to cap off your uh, Buckeye regular season career if you can go out with a victory against a team up north and have a huge impact doing it. I got a question for you before we move on with the show. Earlier this year, I was very vocal about Chip Trainum, number 19. Mm-hmm. He needed touches. This is also at a time when Henderson was hurting. Yep. Ryan Williams was in and out of the lineup, and we Chip Trainum that hurt. And so, like, everybody was banged up. But I said, hey, hey Trainum needs, I said, eight to ten t- touches. Primarily carries, but touches a game is what he needs. Clearly, that's not needed because Henderson's mm-hmm. healthy and playing phenomenal ball. But do you see him getting five carries in this game? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we're going to run the ball a lot, to be honest with you. I think, I mean, Ryan Day knows that you can't finesse Michigan. You right. can't you can't go Oklahoma on them um, or Lincoln Riley on them, I should say, because Lincoln Riley took that weakness to USC. <laughs> but um, that being said, you got to be able to match physicality with them. And quite frankly, we had success running the ball on them last year. Uh, we can do it. Now, the offensive line isn't quite as good as it was last year, but it's it's still plausible we can do it. And I mean, Trey, Trey and him offers something a little bit more than what Henderson does, that, that physica, physical run style. So, honestly, you need to pound that front seven a little bit. And and I, I'm, and I'm not to mention his pass pro is pretty good. Yeah. So, 
he, he offers that, you know, if you're going to have him in the game for pass pro, you've, you've got to mix it up and let him run the ball a little bit. So Michigan, you know, maybe mix it up. with Now, if they're long enough stealing the signs, then maybe you keep Michigan guessing a little bit. <laughs> there it comes up once again. There's a question for those of you watching on YouTube. Will Ohio State beat Michigan? We haven't answered that question yet. We're going to next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total up front. So you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On Calls for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. This episode is also brought to you by. Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. And did you know Billiards Plus has top-of-the-line grills with up to 30-year warranties? That's longer than most roofs. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Ohasen, Canada. Billiards and more. Plus top-of-the-line grills from PK, Napoleon, Memphis, and the Griddle. That could very well be the last grill you own. The perfect gift for any occasion is in stock at Billiards Plus. Go big with an awesome pool table or shuffleboard table or a little more modest with a dartboard or poker table. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. And the people at Billiards Plus are the best part of the experience. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will take amazing care of you billiards plus visit their showroom on dublin center drive in dublin Corey, i did something i didn't plan on doing on yesterday's show i already said who i thought is going to win the game that is ohio state right, we're done here then let's go <laughs> pretty much we're done we were going to be done earlier now we're done now and my belief in this team Corey. Mm -hmm. I, the offense has gotten a lot better i believe in the offensive line in a way that i didn't believe in them week two or week three or even after the Notre Dame game. But when I started to go back and rewatch games two or three weeks after they were played, I gained a bigger appreciation and respect for the offensive line and realized my analysis wasn't proper. The offensive line was starting to get better week two, week three, week four. They did a whole lot better against Notre Dame than I think they, get, they got credit for. Mm -hmm. But in this game, I expect the same thing. They're not going to – it's not like you got Paris Johnson and DeWan Jones and – those guys out there, you don't have that at Ohio State. But you have guys that are getting better and better mm -hmm. and better every week. And I do think they're up to the task of running the ball against Michigan. But my biggest belief in this team is because of the defense. I said it going into the Notre Dame game. I said it going into the Penn State game. I said it going into Maryland. I said it going into Rutgers every game this year. My belief in this team that they're going to win is because of the defense. They have stepped up and rose to the occasion numerous times this year. And I, they did it at Notre Dame Stadium. They're going to do it again, I do believe, tomorrow in the big house. My belief in this team, offensively, they've gotten better. But I believe mm. this defense will get the job done. Yeah, I big Jim Knowles guy fan. I was so such a fan of his hire. And I know it was some uh, scrutiny last year because in big games, the defense kind of let down. Yeah. Um, and again, it was his first year, but we, we, everybody said it, right. He, the defense progressively gets better. The more time he's had at the, at the school and it's being proven true this year. Um, look, I, you know, uh, Moses B Moses came on my show and he, he had a really good point. He says, we're adding in the fact that Proctor and Sonny Styles are playing and they're and they're in there. It's going to help against the run because there's the guys are big guys who can tackle and cover. Uh, it stinks not to have Lathan Ransom. I wish he could play, but it, yeah, man, that's, it, that's a big loss. Yeah, it's yeah. tough. Um, he's having he's having a great year. Perry Aliano deserves his flowers for what he's done with that safety room. <laughs> they better pay that man because he might be gone real soon. I know. There's there's definitely teams looking for a D coordinator, and that that's the name is going to yeah. come up. 
and rightfully so. And if he if he goes for greener pastures, I wish him the best. Absolutely, because yeah. um, he's done a phenomenal job here, and I hate to have to replace him. But um, anyway, that's neither here nor there, I guess. But you know, uh, the defense. You know what what I think the mentality of the de- last year was boom or bust. It's like they either did three and out or eighty five yard play. It just it just there was no in between. Um, this year they do give up yards, and Knowles has prepared them for that. It it takes a mental discipline to see chunk plays here and there and know you're going to stop them. It's okay. Okay. Like 15 yards. Okay. Whatever. They're at the 50 now. Okay. But they're at the 45 now. Okay. Whatever. And now they're punting. <laughs> you know, that's just how this defense has been. The mental toughness and discipline that had to be instilled in our defense to allow that and not start to panic or freak out guys like Denzel Burke, who've been around the block. Now I love Denzel Burke's attitude. He brings a toughness to this defense. It cannot be matched. He reminds me of Damon Arnett a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, Igbenison also same exact mentality the, and also intelligence by the way these guys are correcting guys on this on the field as they're lining up say hey watch the slot here you know back up a little bit he's running you know they they have the intelligence understanding of their offense is running the I love the fact that they bring that toughness and they have that mental discipline plus the the, the veterans like Steele and Tommy uh, you, you know all these guys are veterans now Sawyer JT Hall all of them they're all veterans now they don't panic when we're okay. We're getting a drive on us. You know, we don't have to make a huge play to turn it around. We can still stuff it, and they do usually. Um, the year two, the Jim Knowles experiment has been an absolute, you know, incredible success. It has been. Talk about veterans. And I made a comment earlier this week about Cody Simon, mm-hmm. and I was wondering how much Cody Simon would end up playing. Talk about the versatility that Ohio State has on defense between Sonny Styles and Josh Proctor and maybe bringing Malik Hartford or Jihad Carter off the bench and wondering if we may see an occasional 4-3 defense based off of the personnel that they mm-hmm. see and say, well, if they're going to play heavy, how about we play heavy because we can? Then I said, well, maybe they want to bring in Jihad Carter, have him go back and bring Sonny Styles up, but him and the nickel take Jordan Hancock off the field. Why? Because if you have Sonny Styles on the field, you can still defend the run. He's kind of a linebacker, but he's also a safety. There's so much versatility with this defense. And that's another big reason why I believe Ohio State will win the game. The versatility on defense that they have, I mm-hmm. believe, is going to be seen in a big way tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, you know, the great thing about Jordan Hancock, as great as he's been this year, you don't even have to take him off the field. No, you he's don't. absolutely you don't. willing to go out and pop somebody. Uh, he's a willing tackler, uh, and he's also a good coverage guy. But he can blitz him too. He's also been effective in the in the uh, delayed uh, corner blitz. Um, that the versatility, the versatility you're talking about is absolutely accurate because of the personnel we have, but also the personnel willing to do things that are out of character or yes. out of what you would think. Yes, like like uh, Sonny Styles being, you know, honestly, Sonny Styles is obviously a great athlete, but you wouldn't think he could cover a slot, but he can. Yes. And then he also adds that element of, okay, you're going to run the ball to that edge. Okay, well, Sonny Styles and JT are on that side, so good luck. You know, that's why it's been so effective at stopping the run this year. I know everybody's like, well, they're, they're ga- we're getting gashed a little bit here and there in some of the games. I still maintain that's part of the bend, don't break philosophy as you're feeling out the offense. I'm not too worried about it. Don't they get a five yard run? Yeah, it stinks, but better than an 80 yard run. <laughs> it's you know it's uh, those things were backbreakers. We lost last year mainly because of big plays. Yeah, and we have completely turned that around this year. We yes. I don't even think we've allowed a play of forty yards yet this season. One and eleven and eleven at one against Rutgers. It was the oh, uh, fumble. You're fumble right. You're game. right. You're right. You're fumble- <laughs> well, so it had to be a goofy trick play in one game in eleven games. <laughs> and I got I'll give against Rutgers the- credit. I'll yes. give Rutgers credit. That was a great play. Um, you're right. I remember that. I remember that was like, well, that's actually just creative. I'm not even mad. Very creative. <laughs> and I was also impressed by how well their quarterback and running back ran the ball. I was like, mm. my goodness, this these guys are good. Credit to Greg Schiano and Rutgers. I don't really give them respect as a football team. He's done a phenomenal job of coaching that team up to Making make them, them bowl eligible. And in in only eight games are bowl eligible. That's huge for that program. Yep, they're down out on a losing streak now, but uh, well, they, yeah. they, they're getting in the meat of the Big Ten schedule. This is what it is, but they're, they're not that talented. It, it's it's okay though. It's uh, yeah, you're right. He has made them absolutely much more um, competitive than they have been in the past. Corey, I saw someone or heard someone actually. I think it was on the podcast 
I don't know if it was Austin Ward or Bill mm. Landis. I don't know who it was. Um, but someone talked about it and said maybe Jordan Hancock leaves at the end of the year to go to the NFL. I never, I never thought about that. I assumed the draft analysts and the people at the NFL level would say, no, nah, how about you start one year first before coming to the NFL? But do you think it's realistic that Ohio State will be without him next year? I'll say it's possible. Yeah. Um, I know it seems like a cop out, but I I think he's gonna get. I mean, obviously, uh, Denzel Burke's gone. Yeah. And, yeah. And he's gonna be a first round draft pick, rightfully so. I would say to Jordan, like, look, you're likely taking his spot. You know, I mean, it's gonna be you and Igbignos. Igbignos. I can't ever say his name. I'm sorry. Igbignos and um, Igbenison. Sorry. Uh, as the outside corners, and we'll figure out the slot. But. Here's the question. Is Jordan's skill set lend him to the outside or not? I don't know yet. Well, uh, I was also thinking Jermaine Matthews Jr. is going to be trying to start next year. Yeah, he's, he's a good one. He's going to be good. Yeah, he's already good. He's going to be <laughs> great. <laughs> uh, you know what? Maybe I tell Hancock, like, look, you can go in the – Kendall Fuller is a good example. You can go in the first round as a slot corner, uh, be one more year, get a little bit more. Because, I mean, really it's like the second half of the season Hancock really started turning it on. Say give one season that with those kind of highlights and those guy kind of production and see what we can do with you in year three of this defense and and maybe you, we can up your draft stock a little bit and here's by the way here's some nil money yeah. you know to keep you here um, so I, I I look at that and say it's possible he, he he did say he meant when he's made a tweet about last game in the shoe he did mean it for this year so people can relax about that a little bit but he did say that he has a decision to make and I'm like well I hope you come back one more. Yeah, I, I'm I am right there as well. I hope, I hope, I hope if he comes back. Honestly, secondary is gonna be great next year with Matthews, Ig Ig, Ig and uh Hancock. That's a great secondary. And it, by the way, development of Calvin Simpson Hunt. We got Aaron. Oh my Scott. gosh, I forgot about him. I, mean, I forget. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, hey, hey, give credit to Tim Walton. He's done what we hope we wished Kerry Combs could have done. You know, the whole reason. We hired Kerry Combs was to rebuild that secondary because Alex Grinch, yes, that Alex Grinch screwed us badly when he was yeah. here in recruiting. And we went several years of inconsistent recruiting. And Tim Walton in two years has completely replenished that that room. So all credit to him. The only thought I have about Hancock, and we saw this with Sean Wade, if your best fit is inside at nickel, stay mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Don't try to go outside to raise your draft stock. Now, Sean Wade, I think, also got hurt that year. So he it was, was like, injured. yeah. So this, so, so and in a terrible issues. defense. <laughs> yeah, that too. That too. Yeah. But sometimes staying where you are, where you're best at, will fit you the best, not only mm -hmm. at the current level, but also at the next level. Corey, last thing here, I didn't even ask you this, but do you have a score prediction for tomorrow? I do. I, uh, good guys, 27. Uh, the uh, Beavers, <laughs> 17. <laughs> Um, so still, you don't think anybody's going to score over 17 points in this? I, I think season? we hold them. I, their offense is not doing great right now. Now they have a big, they have a big play penchant once in a while, but we've been doing great against big plays. JJ's, I think, a little bit injured right now. Um, I don't. He hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in like a month, which means he's going to throw six against us or something. That's how that usually works. But um, I just think we're not going to score like a a bundle of points, but I think it's going to be 20 to 17 and then like a touchdown to Marv or Henderson or somebody like that just kind of seals it. So it's, I'm not saying it's like a 10 point, just like comfortable blowout. I'm just saying it's, it becomes one of those last couple minute touchdowns, you know, that like in Aaron was like, okay, now we feel comfortable. We're up by 10. There's like two and a half minutes to go. We, we go, you know, that type of thing. I'm going 24, 10. And I do think it's going to be a defensive battle. I, I also think Ohio state's defense might end up scoring a touchdown in this game. I don't know if it's going to be Pick JT six. or Jack or Steele. I, I don't know. But I do easily see the defense scoring because, dude, they've been so, so good this year. It mm -hmm. would just not seem right, not feel right, or not even feel like them, the Buckeyes mm -hmm. defense, if they didn't do that. Do you have any last comments about this game before we wrap up the show? I will say this, guys. I understand there's a lot of nerves out there, and this, this kind of thing makes you feel alive at times, but – it's the last game of the regular season. Enjoy it. It goes yes. by way too fast. Please sit down with your family, your friends, 
and not even just on Thanksgiving. Get in front of the TV, get your favorite snack, whatever it is, wings, nachos, pizza. I don't care what it is, guys. Just enjoy it. I mean, when we got to wait eight months, you know, for another season, and I, I, it's horrible to wait for it. Buckeye football is a special gift, and receive it and be happy about it and enjoy your family. Corey, I hope you enjoy your. I hope you enjoy the time, the people you may be watching the game with. I am looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the game. I'm looking forward to the nerves that I have been feeling this week and sometimes the uneasy feeling because the game has not been played yet. I'm looking forward to the game. It's always a highlight of the college football season to watch this rivalry unfold until, unfortunately, we get the outcomes we've gotten in the past couple of years. I don't think Ohio State's going to be on the losing end. I think Ryan Day's done a phenomenal job himself of, of adapting and growing this year. And, Corey, we both like – every guest I've had on this week, you, uh, Jeff Hunt, I've had Brian Smith, the Locked On Recruiting Analyst, every guest believes Ohio State's going to win. And Brian doesn't even care about Ohio State. He just believes, oh, they're better than Michigan. And we're going to find out tomorrow – if that's the case for Corey Thompson of the Scarlet and Great Empire on the YouTube, you can follow him on X, formerly known as Twitter at Scarlet Great CT. You can follow me on the same platform at jsteven07. I hope you enjoyed celebrating Thanksgiving. If you're doing it today or tomorrow with family and friends, I hope you enjoy the celebration. And I also hope we all enjoy the game tomorrow when Ohio State, Mich- Ohio State, Michigan battle it out in the big house. This has been locked on Buckeyes here. On a Friday, I'll see you next time.